I need to get up. I need to get ready. One of my very, very good friends passed away. And today is her celebration of life. I need to do my hair, do my makeup. Figure out what I'm going to wear. <laughs> Hello, family. <laughs> my whole crew just came in. So. Time to go. <laughs> Dr. Peppers at Sam's Club. They're made with cane sugar and they're in glass. Best way to start my get ready with me. Crisp Dr. Papa. This is my first get ready with me on the camera and I'm a little nervous about it because I don't know how to use this camera. But I'm desperately trying because I love vlogging and I really do want to connect with you guys and like get to know you more and y'all get to know me more and yeah, have a little community. I didn't feel like I belonged whenever I was younger and it took me a really, really long time to realize that that wasn't because of an issue with me. So I can remember in my early twenties, like really leaning on YouTube vloggers that don't even know that like I relied on them to make me feel safe. So if I can be that for somebody, then hell yeah, right? I feel like I need to tell you guys a little bit about myself. I am 32. <laughs> I have four children. I have an 18 year old son named Dylan, a 17 year old son named Vance, a four year old son named Boston, and a one year old daughter named Juliet. My two older sons are my bonus babies. Whenever I met their dad, Mark, um, they were nine and 10, and now they are 17 and 18. And that is sad and heartbreaking to me because literally Dylan is gonna graduate high school next month. I'm planning a graduation party right now. And that means like literally, Vance is gonna do the same thing all over. It's been two years of, of crying because of milestones. And then Boston's gonna start kindergarten and we're gonna start all over again. So yeah, maybe I can get really good at this YouTube thing and pay for all their colleges and all their first cars and all their things and not have to worry about anything. That's my, that's my dream and goal. When somebody asks me like, what do you want to do? Why do you want to do YouTube? I really want to connect with people. I want to give somebody a safe space to exist in. I want to be that person that they can lean on whenever they're feeling sad and that will validate their feelings and their emotions when nobody else will. I want to be able to monetize it so that I can pay for my kids to have whatever they dream of in this world, whatever they dream of. I want to write books. I really, really want to write books. Maybe even make a movie one day, which sounds crazy, but I love content creation so much and I love the editing side of it too. So maybe I have a creative brain and I just really want to use it. And I miss theater so much. I did theater whenever I was in high school. I was a big theater nerd, like went on all the trips, did one act, did all the things. So I miss it. And um, I don't know, I just want to make a difference a positive difference in this world, somehow. Yeah, need to blow dry my hair. So, let's do that. Okay, I think it's like 80% dry, so I'm gonna put this like big mama jamma on it. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. The one thing that's nice about having my hair shorter because it was so long, girl, it was so long, um, is just how little time it takes to dry it now. <laughs> it doesn't take very long at all. I do kind of miss my old hair, but you guys, I was in the fresh postpartum stage of having a new baby and getting spit up in your hair or just like even honestly having the mental capacity to even get up and brush my hair some days was just not there. So yeah, I'm doing better with the short hair. Here we go. Just a 
and hopes that she'll keep her volume. Let's see if we can't force these bangs to stay where they're at. I'm never any good at this. Hold on. Hold up. Oh my gosh, that one's huge. Do I not? I thought it was a smaller one. I should have sworn I did. Okay, then. this is what we're going with because I thought I had a smaller one, but I guess I am. I look literally like Snooky circa 2013. Maybe it was before that, 2008? I don't feel like I could do my makeup like this. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna. I think it's gonna crease. Crap. Oh yeah! I have some of these clippy thingies. I'll use this. Oh, now we can do our makeup. First, moisturizing cream. Oh, I'm so bummed. So we recently moved, right? We decided to sell our house so that we could get out of debt. We could just like completely start over. Um but it's still under contract right now. It's actually about to close. And I ordered some stuff off Sephora. I really wanted to try like that one size primer and the setting spray. And then I ordered um, Jackie Aina's perfume, the NDA. I'm so, so excited to try it. I ordered it to the other house. So we're gonna have to drive over there and get that. I'm just kind of so bummed about it because I would have used that as my primer right now, but it's okay. I needed to moisturize anyways. I'm thinking that I want to get my eyebrows laminated, but I have never done it and I've never known anyone who did it. And then like, what was it like afterwards? Did you like it? Did it make your eyebrows weird? Did they get all soft and perm like? I just want to know somebody else's experience before I commit. <laughs> Favorite foundation ever, the Tarte Amazonian Clay. It's like full freaking coverage for sure. But she never lets me down. So about me, gosh. Um, I'm married, if you didn't know, I'm married to a really wonderful man. His name is Mark, he's a goofball. He will probably join us a lot on this channel. Mark is 45 and I am 32 and we met at work. I was in the dental field, I was a dental assistant and then a lead dental assistant and then I was an office manager. And in the time that I went from lead dental assistant to office manager, we started privately dating and we were working at first in the same practice and then I moved to a different practice. So we were dating, but it wasn't a big deal because we weren't working like in the same office, but we still didn't tell anybody. And then I got transferred back to the original office where I was like pretty much his boss, his direct boss. So we still kind of kept it a little secret which honestly can i just tell you after years and i mean years of being so open and vulnerable and just like out there with my relationships online with social media i've always really been an oversharer um having a private boyfriend for a year was the best thing i ever did it was so nice it was so wonderful we got to, like we got to know each other and got to get like on a closer, more private, personal level before anybody could have their opinion about us whatsoever. And it was just the best move I ever made. So if you, if you take my advice, be private with your relationships online. Because the one, like, the one thing that I have noticed is whenever I was in my previous relationships, whenever I was younger, I was kind of a love bomber in the sense of, like, I posted a lot about them on social media with, like, long, like, professions of my love for them as captions and shit. And honestly, I don't do that a lot with Mark, but I am in a much better relationship with him than I was with the other people. So... They say that, that that's a true thing that people do, and I never believed that. Whenever I was in those relationships, I was like, whatever, I'm, I'm in love, and I'm just telling everyone, and now I get it. Now I get it, girl. It was actually my insecurities screaming, and that has a lot to do with my abandonment issues, um, but I'm getting over that. We're in therapy. I got this off of Amazon. It is Catrice Under Eye Brightener Instant Awake. It works so well. So well, it's kind of pink. I love it. It's just like an under eye concealer. At least that's what I replaced it with. Oh no, I don't know that I love it with this 
foundation. I usually use it like directly on my skin. I've never, oh no, I've never applied it with a foundation. Look at how weird it looks. No, is it only meant to be for like natural girly days? <gasps> Look at what it's doing. Ew. No. Oh no. How do I repair this? Can I repair this? Oh yeah, that just comes right off. Like, right in the places that I applied it. Okay. We're going in with our tried and true. Tarte Shape Tape. I don't even know why I steered away from you. Ah. <sighs> You know, you live and you learn. That's crazy. So I guess the formula in that is like oil-based or something and that's what breaks down that foundation. It works really well whenever I just apply it to my face. But I've never done it um, with foundation, so. Now I know. When I was 18, I joined the army. Yeah. Uh, I don't talk about this a lot, but the year, my 18th year was so hard for me. I made a lot of really dumb decisions and a lot of really careless choices. And it also led me to a lot of heartbreak. You talking to the people? Yeah. Cool. I told them that you were going to come in here eventually. Really? Yeah. Well, I here said, I am. <laughs> here I am. Come a little Take closer. me as I am. Is that a song? I don't know. I'm a little closer, but you're like out of, you were blurry. <laughs> I told y'all he was going to be weird. <laughs> well, I just took a shower, so I hope, I hope I smell good. I, I cleaned myself. Stop it. Get out of here, you weirdo. <laughs> you're a weirdo. Well, yeah. This is him. He is a clean Sagittarius whose love language is physical touch. And I am a rigid <laughs> Capricorn service. who prefers acts of service. I eat <laughs> the dishes. Work for me, boy. <laughs> what? Stop petting me. Oh my God, stop it. What do you need? I love you with all of I my need heart. I need squeezes. <laughs> uh, beauty, can I, blush you drops. Can you that in Yoki? Hymns? I don't know. He might try it. It's worth a shot. At least we were able to save the concealer fiasco. Mark and I got married in 2020. It was the most beautiful wedding. It was perfect in every single way. We went to Mexico afterwards for our honeymoon, even though we were supposed to go to Greece, but COVID kind of had everything shut down. One day I will get to Greece, one day. One day on, I will take you with me and I will show you everything and we will eat all of the food. Oh, one day, it's a dream, but it's an expensive dream. But, so we went to Mexico instead because it was just much more cost effective and their borders were open, so. But it was wonderful, it was perfect. Yeah, we've been living our happily ever after ever since, even though it is so stressful because life is just life and life is always gonna be stressful. It is nice to have a partner that like, gets you and understands you and works with you to better yourselves together. That's what I hope for all of you, is that you find somebody who always pushes you to be better every single day because we're always learning, always learning. 32, forever gonna be learning. Half the things that I thought that I stood by in my 20s, I disagree with now in my 30s. So just remember that. Take your time, be patient, and remember to be open-minded and always be learning. I also got new eyebrow stuff. Oh but it's over at the old house. This is the Benefit Brow one. And I think I also got another Benefit Brow product, but it's the one that has like three spikes that make it look like little hairs instead of the wand. I don't know, I've just, I've really been considering the whole eyebrow lamination. So I need y'all to tell me what your opinions are of it because I've been growing out these brows and they're making me crazy. Some of the things I love, Christmas. Christmas time is my favorite time of year. Aside from only like by like 2% um, Halloween love. I, honestly, I love Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. That is just the best little pocket of the year. Harry Potter. I'm a big Harry Potter nerd. Big time. That's another dream vacation is one day I will go to London 
and I will see where they did Harry Potter. My family and doing silly things for my family like gift baskets or fun desserts or making little memories and that's really what I feel like I want to share here even though I don't feel comfortable sharing my kids faces like my little kids my older kids can kind of choose for themselves they're old enough to know better but my younger kids I am gonna shield a bit but I still think I can show like Easter baskets and stockings and their birthday stuff and like little things without completely and totally ruining their privacy if you will so if you're down for that kind of family journey then follow along let's hang out because i really want to be over here a lot more than tiktok i feel like this is more family oriented for me and over there it can just get harsh these days like really very harsh my comfort shows if this says anything about me are schitt's creek friends and big bang theory <laughs> This is the Benefit Brow. It's just the clear wax gel. So I'm just going to set these bad boys. My eyebrows stress me out so bad, y'all. So if they're stressing you out, they're stressing me out too. Okay. We have to figure out what to do with them. <laughs> I love 90s country music. I'm a Christian. I'm actually considering getting baptized very soon. I got baptized whenever I was younger, but I don't think that I understood it fully. And I think that now I've just been on this journey with my faith. And I feel like, yeah, maybe it's the, maybe it's the right time. I love seasonal home decor that's like interchangeable like a home sign that the o changes every single month give me all that <laughs> i just think they're so cute i love to read i love to read i'm actually rereading the harry potters right now i'm on the seventh book this is the Givenchy prism powder i think that's what it's called yeah prism libre it's kind of pink as well and <laughs> It just sets a lot better if you ask me. Just like maybe don't inhale it. <laughs> it does make for a flawless finish though. This is the Makeup by Mario. It's Ethereal Eyes. I'm probably just going to use these three because I just want to go something supernatural, but it has the best cream that I have anyways. When I was younger, um, until I was four, I lived with my mom and then I lived with my dad. They were divorced whenever I was like nine months old. My mom already had two daughters, so I have two older sisters. And then my parents had me, and they divorced. And then my dad remarried whenever I was seven and had my brother and then my sister and then my other brother. So I am one of six. I grew up in a small town in Texas. It's actually kind of booming now. It's growing rapidly, but it used to be small and had like super small town charm to it. But whenever I was younger, I just like could not wait to escape it as fast as possible. Sometimes I miss it. Sephora liquid liner. This is the best one. I have it in so many different colors and I've just used it for years, years and years. And it is my favorite. I don't think I can talk and do this though. I might be making a mistake by putting on eyeliner because I'm probably going to cry it off. <laughs> Curl my lashes and I'm going to use the Voluminous Superstar by L'Oreal. It's waterproof. It's one of my faves because it has a primer. Usually I use the L'Oreal Double Extend. It is my absolute favorite mascara, but it's not waterproof. So we're going to go with this one today. After I finish reading book seven, I am going to read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I think that's what it's called. Mark got it for me for my birthday and I've just like had it sitting waiting, but I've been reading the other books. So if you want to read that along with me, let's do it. I love to cook. I'm not like great. I, okay. I'm good at cooking, but I'm not like great at it. I'm definitely not a chef. Sometimes I've thought about taking like culinary classes just to have the skill, you know, like just to have it underneath my belt. I think that would be also super fun. I love food. I'm a huge foodie. When it comes to vacations and stuff, I'm going where the food is. Like, I'm not going to go hiking or to do anything like that. I'm going to go sightseeing, yes, but first we're going to eat, right? Like, somewhere super great. Because I want to try all the food. Like, room service? Please. I would go stay at hotels just to try the room service. 
for the most part, my stepmom raised me. My mom was not really involved in my life. I've kind of done more of a deep dive of that on my podcast. I have a podcast with my friend Cindy. It's called Mom's the Word. It's here on YouTube if you want to watch it. Um, or you can listen on Spotify or Apple. I don't think I need to like go into it too heavy over here. I'll just say that like it sucks. I had this like real yearn to want her in my life whenever I was younger. I think anybody does when you're younger. You don't really understand why that parent doesn't want to be around you and it's really it's traumatizing to be fair um there's a lot more obviously to my childhood that that i haven't talked about and i haven't gone into um with you guys but i am with a therapist so that's what matters <laughs> but i think now as an adult who has a child as a mother now I, I just don't understand i don't understand and the forgiveness that i was able to give as a daughter um is not the same that i give as as a mother, if that makes sense. So, I'm also in this stage of, of life where I've just realized like bad shit happens to everyone. Like hard shit happens to everyone. Everyone goes through something different that is really, really hard and changes their character and, and makes them and shapes them into the person that they are. And I'm not gonna sit around and cry victim about the shit that I went through as a child. Was it hard? Yes, but honestly, I am who I am because of it. I feel like I am a great mom because I know what it feels like to have the absence of a mother there. And yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna use it more for my power than for my pain. I'm gonna take that back and, and reclaim that and, and show people, especially younger people, if you're watching this, if you're in your early 20s and you're feeling that confusion and, and that yearn to like want to have a relationship with the parent that wasn't there when you were a younger child, you don't need them. And eventually you realize it really is their loss. If they don't want to be in your life, let them go. And, and that goes for anyone. <laughs> let them go if they don't want to be in your life. If you have to beg them to stay, let them go. You're so much better off without them. I promise. But yeah. <laughs> so I'm close to my stepmom. I don't even like to call her my stepmom, honestly, because to me she feels like my mom. But at the same time, my mom also feels like my mom. So it just, it kind of just gets muddy. It's confusing. And yeah, <laughs> I'm working it out with a the therapist. <laughs> I think I was talking about the bad decisions I'd made at 18. Yeah, I was somewhat of an idiot at 18, to be fair. I got pregnant at my senior prom, and then three months into that pregnancy, uh, I had a miscarriage, and it was horrible. It was awful. I had moved out of my parents' house. I was living on my own. I was working two jobs. I was literally doing anything that I could to survive and to be this adult because I was gonna have a baby and then all of a sudden that baby was gone and I was heartbroken and it really, I was so lost. I, would, I did some dumb things in that time. I've talked about it again on my podcast a little bit, um, but I was desperate for money and did things that I'm not, not ashamed of, but not proud of. I had to make decisions that were related to desperation and I hate that, but I was also too prideful to ask anybody for help um, and frankly had been told that no one was going to give me any so I just did whatever I had to do and I haven't talked about this and honestly I honestly we had a part of it on the podcast with my stepmom and I had them edited out because I was like you know what I get to keep this this gets to be mine and I'm not going to share this but I think that it really is part of my spiral. <laughs> it was part of my, of my, of my downfall. And, um, that year that I was 18. So in July I had a miscarriage and I just kind of started being an 18 year old with too much freedom. I was hanging out with people that were not good for me. And then got a boyfriend that, you know, was down in a college town and we were hooking up a lot and we were having a lot of fun. And, I got pregnant again, and um, this time it was an ectopic pregnancy, which means that the baby was inside of my fallopian tube. It did not implant in my uterus, so that is not a viable pregnancy. They have to go in and do a DNC, and at that point, I was like, I'm such a broken human. Like, I can't make babies. My own mother doesn't love me and doesn't want to be in my life. Um, 
and you know, whatever. I was the victim. It was poor me. It was pitiful me. And I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, yeah. I tried to disappear. And then a friend of mine found me and took me to the hospital. And I had to be transported to a psych ward and they um, made me like sign paperwork and everything to say that like, I wasn't gonna be a harm to myself before I could um, leave, discharge myself, which was interesting. I, I don't know why now thinking about it that I was able to discharge myself, but I think that is more of an issue with um, Texas like mental health services than um, anything. Cause I mean, I was 18, like somebody should have called my parents, but they didn't because I was 18, so. And then after that, I just kind of like woke up and was like, I have to do something more with myself and I need to be more, I need to do better. And so I joined the army. I ran into a recruiter at a gas station one day and I was just like, huh. I went to MEPS on, a, on the Tuesday after I talked to the recruiter for the first time. And then three weeks later, I shipped out. <laughs> for basic training at Fort Leonard, Missouri. And I, that time shaped me, 100% it shaped me in a big way. But I did not graduate AIT. So I don't, I graduated basic training. Here's how I explain this to people. Basic training is like high school and AIT is like college. Basic training, everyone has to do high school, right? And then college you learn like you're more like on the job stuff. I didn't get to go on to AIT. I actually had to go on a con leave and had to go home because I had stress fractures in both my legs from a ruck march. So that rocked. So then I was broken again. And then the army was like, you're not fit for duty. So we're gonna go ahead and discharge you. So I just kind of felt like a huge disappointment again. And then that is whenever I had my first same sex relationship. I started dating a girl and my parents were like, this is a phase or you're just trying to piss me off. It's basically, I think what my dad thought. So um, it was not like approved of, if you will. So I was alone without a car. My cell phone had been shut off, so I had to get my own cell phone service. Uh, and I had no home. So I went and lived with m my now ex-wife um, in Houston and rode the Metro bus and worked my ass off. And um, yeah, 18 spiraled me into some crazy years, um, but I was broken. I was a very broken hearted little girl. And I think I was that broken hearted little girl until I was 26, to be fair. So if you're in your early 20s and you still feel like inside you're, you're hurting because of what happened when you were younger, like, it's normal, babe. And eventually it does get better. Eventually you learn your worth and you like wake up and everything's okay. <laughs> but I just hope that I can parent in a way that instills so much confidence into my children that they don't like, look for their self-worth within relationships because that's what I did whenever I was younger. I really was only happy if somebody else loved me and they like made it known that they loved me. That's what I desperately needed as a young adult. Now I, I don't give a shit if you love me. I love me. I worked too hard to get here to care if you love me because you didn't walk a single day in my shoes. I did. So. That's how I feel about haters. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I was just blabbing my gums. I totally forgot. This is makeup by Mario Bronzer. This is makeup by Mario Blush. This is Mellow Mauve. This is Light Medium. And the compact that I use is the best product on the whole planet. It's Estet, no, Lancome Dual Finish. It is so good. Like literally, my skin just looks perfect whenever I put this on. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Products are subjective to people, but I love it. Highly recommend it. Then I went to college. I got my registered dental assistant's license and an associate's in applied science. And then started working, got a divorce, got my first divorce, did some stupid shit the year that I got a divorce too. That was the year that I really kind of 
did some adult dumb things and put myself in some positions that could have legally gotten me into a lot of trouble. But by the grace of God, I learned a lot of hard lessons. I was, I'm definitely one of those people that like has to learn things the hard way. So if you're gonna follow me, just know like I'm a human that makes mistakes. 100% I'm not perfect. I'm not at all. I try to be positive and I try to like be kind to people and treat people how I would want to be treated, but I have a mouth on me. I really do. I can be rude sometimes. I don't mean to be. I think it's the trauma. I'm trying to deal with it. I'm literally going to therapy. I'm asking God to make me softer, but I am one of those women that is like suck on my nuts, you know? You know, so I'm working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> so stick around if that's okay with you. This is Make It My Mario lip in Travis. So we live in Texas. I, I was born and raised in Denison, Texas, and we live in a Dallas suburb now. And if it was up to Mark, we would probably live in California. Probably. He's Okay, so he actually was born in Texas, too. He was born in Tyler, Texas. But then his family moved to California to maybe the Valley area. I should know this. And then in middle school, moved back to Texas. And so he's always wanted to go back to California. He did whenever he was like younger, before he had kids. But then whenever he had kids, he was like, oh crap, well, I have responsibilities now. He was an aspiring actor, so he had to have a real job. So he went to dental school and said, so Mark is a dentist who wishes he was a comedian slash actor. And probably that was, that was probably his calling. Maybe I will monetize this so much I can help him chase his dreams too. That would be, that's the ultimate goal, right? To be able to like buy my sister a car. My, literally, you want to know my dreams? I want to buy my little sister a car. I want to help my brother pay for his wedding. I want to give my other little brother help with his college fund. And then I want to be able to pay for all my kids to go to college in a brand new car if they want one. I want to be able to help them their, with their weddings and their houses, their first houses. I just want to be that family member that you can come to whenever you need something. And we have like this big 20 acre compound where we have chickens and goats and cows and we have our own eggs and I grow vegetables and I get to watch all of my nieces and nephews and grandkids grow up in one big space and we all just live happily ever after and have the best lemonade recipe of the whole town and you know like shit like that. That's what I want. That's what I want for my life is to just be nice to other people, to give back and to do it in a way to the people that I love that they never have to worry about anything ever again. The only other country I've ever been to outside of the USA is Mexico. So I would love to go to Europe. I would also really love to go to Japan or Korea. Honestly, I just want to go everywhere. I don't want to spend my whole life in my head either. I deal with a lot of mental health issues. I have a lot of anxiety. I dealt really bad with postpartum depression which I think about all the time, like I have ADHD and OCD and they want to give me medication for it, but I'm very afraid of medication and I wouldn't do it whenever I was pregnant and nursing and I'm still nursing. So that's a no for me right now, but soon I won't be nursing anymore. And I think maybe I should try to be on the medicine, but I don't know. I'm really afraid of medication like that. Big Pharma absolutely terrifies me. Like what if I lose who I am? What if all of a sudden I'm not me? But then again, Sometimes being me really sucks because sometimes I'm mean to me. So it'd be nice if I didn't do that too. This is Makeup by Mario in Sam. Sam is the shade. I think the makeup is done. I think we're just gonna call that the moment. Uh-oh. This is stuck! <gasps> Don't rip my hair out, OMG. Tragedy. Okay. Leave a crease, kinda. Okay, I really didn't on that one though. Now I gotta get dressed. And I don't know what I wanna wear. Yeah, this goes in the front. Deodorant. Gosh, I'm four minutes late already. I think I'm literally, I'm just gonna wear flats because I can't. I can't walk in heels, y'all. I hate them. I hate them. Because of my army injuries, I now have a nerve disease called complex regional pain syndrome. 
and it is the worst. So heels are a no-go and Crocs are a yes most of the time. <sighs> okay, friends. Perfume, j'adore Dior, always. Always, unless this NDA by Jackie Ayanna is really good. I'm excited to try it. Okay, I'll see you later. That was a beautiful service, um, but it was very sad. I feel like now I'm just going to take off this makeup <laughs> because literally the Kleenex that I had was just like destroying my makeup and um, put on some pajamas, maybe watch a comfort movie, maybe some Harry Potter tonight because that's my comfort routine. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll just go do a little reset so that um, I can feel better because yeah, grieving sucks. It's, it's part of it, but it sucks. <laughs> Now that I look ridiculous, like just be crying. And how lucky am I to have loved someone so much that it makes saying goodbye hard. Little family walk. The grass in these yards is so freaking green. Wish we had better grass. Our grass is not great. They have great grass. to watch some Harry Potter <laughs> and try to relax. So we ordered in because I'm um, yeah just not feeling it so I got charcuterie to start. One of these little crustinis and dipped it in the strawberry jam with some brie. Gray stuff is pate. Oh yeah, I got truffle fries. So there's truffle fries on the menu. Like I'm getting them. I don't care how much food I have. Like it's truffle fries. Yes, please. Mm. You always say yes to truffle fries. This is like beef margarine. You know it's like a slow roasted beef. And it's not like carrots and onions and mushrooms and mashed potatoes. Comfort food. Oh, it's tender. Yes. Please and thank you. Oh. I wish the carrots were softer. They're like, not good. <laughs> I think now it's time to just veg out and enjoy Harry Potter and Comfort Food. So, I'll see you tomorrow. It is 8 a.m. Sunday morning, and I'm at HEB because I don't want to be here super late on Sunday morning because it gets crazy in there. But I have to get things for Sopa Pia Cheesecake. It's Cinco de Mayo. My friend Jay is having a little dinner. I'm bringing Sopa Pia Cheesecake and fruit for the kiddos. So, here we go. These are pretty. They have literally everything whenever it comes to like hair care or skin care, everything. And there is always coupons everywhere. Look at all of these different face masks. Oh, look at those. Those look fun. Oh, Makeup and nail care. I need to get a like nail file because I had acrylics or not acrylics, I had like next gen, but I'm not gonna go get them right now again, so I need to file my nails. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna go with something simple. Their perfume section. Okay, I got busy in here. So, <laughs> so far I've got paper towels and then I grabbed some baby snacks and then different little baby, like lunches and dinners, breakfast. These are new. Never seen those before. They had a new sticker on them, oatmeal blend. Decided to try those. And then we got the crescent rolls for the sopa pia cheesecake and the cream cheese. So we're nearly done. We gotta go get fruit. That was too much for me and it was high energy. So I got what I needed for today. And then I also got stuff to make like a rigatoni sausage pasta this week. What else did I get? Snacks for the baby. Cantaloupe for Boston. I found these prebiotic or probiotic eggs too. Mark loves that type of shit, so we got him those. 
And I got myself some strawberry ice cream. Now, since we're close, we're gonna go by my old house because I have my Sephora order there and then there's another box. I don't know what it is, but there's something else there. So, here we go. Okay, we just pulled up to the old house. Why am I sad? I loved this house so much. We painted the garage floor. This was our home. It's so empty, it's so weird. So weird. This was our bedroom. The kitchen. This used to be Mark's office. <laughs> Boston's old room. Makes me sad because I had like hand put decals on that wall. We recarpeted too. Upstairs. Used to be like our play area up here. This used to be Juliet's room. <laughs> I'd put decals and painted in here and everything because we kind of expected we'd be here forever, you know? But life doesn't always work out that way. This used to be Dylan's room. It used to be green. <laughs> now it's just white. Same with Vance's room. It used to be black. Now it's just white. I guess I could turn the lights on, but preserve the energy, right? So paying energy bills at two houses is a doozy. This staircase used to be wood, but I had a random hair one weekend that Mark was gotten and decided to paint it black. This was home for a really long time. This was home. This was the first house that I ever owned, <laughs> that I ever had my name on. So it did suck to give that up and go back into the renting space, but at the same time, like, we just couldn't do it. We were not gonna be able to thrive. We couldn't afford this home and family vacations. We couldn't afford this home and uh, upgrades to our things. Like, you know, it was just strapping us. <sighs> time to let it go. And this is probably the last time I'll, I'll come over here. So. Bye, old friend. Thanks for the memories. The benches, most of them were hiding their thick presence that still had some hope, some resilience. In the upper arms of a wizard who appeared to be fainting. To Moore's questionnaire. Yak's clean restraint. <coughs> it cantered around and around the room and swam gracefully through the air to join the stand. Him. Who's got ones? About half of them raised their hands. We made it to Jay's. <laughs> he is cooking over here, y'all. Look at this. Making salsa. Fresh salsa. We have beans. Rice. Yeah. And then brought ceviche. We're gonna make strawberry horchata, y'all. And we have rim dips for margaritas. We have chamoy rim dips from the best rim dip place ever in our area. Tim Hoffman's is here. <laughs> I'm making some guac, aka I'm mixing the HEB guac with pico. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> and that's it.
nothing is more, is more refreshing than strawberry horchata. I just made this. Super delicious. Y'all go check out the recipe at my page. Thank you for Daddy Jane. Hope y'all have a fresh, a refreshing day. She's gonna be gonna be gonna be So now I'm home. I'm going to take a bath in my kid's bath because my bath does not fill up for some reason. It's just like too big or maybe it has a leak. I don't even know, but my kid's bathroom does. So I'm going to take a bath and yeah, thanks for hanging out with me this weekend. It's kind of lame, but yeah, that's, that's my life. I'm just a mom doing mom stuff. This week I'll do a vlog for you guys of like what I do on a weekday whenever Boston has to go to school. So I love you. Thanks for being here. Subscribe if you want to hang out some more. Bye.